Hey, Adam from BE Lens. This channel is all about photography and all things Brisbane, and today we're going to combine the two of them by showing you the top places to check out jacarandas in jacaranda season while they're flowering, as well as some tips for how to make the most of the photo opportunities that come with it. Valley, New Farm Park is one of the best known spots for jacaranda trees. This spot is particularly good if you want to grab a coffee or a bite to eat as there's plenty of good cafes and restaurants along Brunswick Street. If it's photo opportunities you're after, you can't go past Bowen Terrace next to the Story Bridge. It offers great city views with jacarandas in the foreground, and Wilson's Outlook, recently refurbished, has a couple of young jacarandas and a sweeping view of the Story Bridge. But not all of the good spots are in near the city. One of the best of Brisbane is about a 30 minute drive from the CBD. Evan Marginson Park in Goodna is one of my favourites, and the jacaranda lined street along Brisbane Terrace is unmissable. Unfortunately, the local council seem to have gone out of their way to put as many street signs in as possible. So good photos can be a challenge, but we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, I can't do a video on jacarandas without mentioning the University of Queensland. I think the UQ campus of St Lucia is the most scenic of the jacaranda hotspots, with a couple of jacaranda lined lakes beside the Brisbane River. They even have a small jacaranda festival of their own. The next place that's another of my faves is one that you won't find recommended on other sites, but that's certainly worthy to make the list. Fairfield Dog Park is a place where you can let your pooch run free while you admire the many established jacaranda trees. Alright, so now you know some great places to see the jacarandas here in Brisbane. But let me ask you, have you ever been somewhere so beautiful, you take a bunch of photos, but then when you get back and look at the photos, they just don't really seem to capture the same feeling that you had when you were in that spot. All right, so I'm gonna give you eight tips to take some great photos when you're visiting the jacarandas. Tip number one is get down low. The jacarandas in the trees are beautiful, yeah, but they also drop onto the ground and form like a purple carpet, which is quite pretty. So why don't you capture that and make that the feature of some of your photos? If you get down low and then you photograph from the ground up to the trees so that the flowers on the ground are in the foreground and, and you're focused on those and then you've got the flowers in the trees in the background, that'll create depth in your image and just create a more visually interesting photo. So that's the first thing I would give a go if I was visiting the jacarandas. Alright, tip number two is shoot up. I'm not saying do drugs, don't do drugs kids, it's not cool. When I say shoot up, what I mean is stand under the trees and shoot directly up at the flowers. What you are doing then is you're actually removing a lot of the other elements from the scene around the trees that could distract you from the subject. Because after all, the subject really is those beautiful purple flowers. So if you shoot up, you can find parts of the tree where it, it, the branches and the leaves and the flowers create a really nice shape that can be quite visually beautiful. So that's the second tip. 
Tip number three actually goes against some of the advice you've probably read online about photographing jacarandas. A lot of the time people will tell you, shoot with the sun behind you, so that the sun is shining directly on the jacarandas. But I say no, try different light directions. Try shooting against the light, try shooting into the light. Is that the same thing? I'm not really sure. But yeah, shoot towards the light, shoot away from the light, because it's actually going to create different looks. It's going to create different colors, because when the sun is behind the jacarandas shining through the flowers, actually it illuminates those petals and it gives them a, a, a really beautiful glow. That is definitely worth capturing. If you only shoot with the sun behind you, you're never going to get that look. It's not as deep a color, but it can be equally dramatic, especially if you shoot with a dark background. If those flowers are lit from behind and then the background is dark, then they're really going to stand out in your photo. Tip number four is try to create layers in your photo. Photos are only two dimensional, but you wanna give the idea of three dimensions. So try to look for things of different depths. As we mentioned in the first one, if you're shooting with the flowers on the ground in the foreground and the flowers in the trees in the background, that gives that feeling of depth, that people look at the photo and it's like their eyes move into the photo. Well, you can do that also with the arrangement of the things in your scene. For example, if you're taking pictures of multiple jacarandas, like I have behind me here, you can choose one jacaranda that has quite a nice shape and line yourself up so that they step backwards. Instead of shooting them all straight on, one, two, three, you can shoot one close to the camera, one a bit further back and one even further back. So that when the viewer looks at your photos, they're gonna start with that tree at the front and then move back into the photo through the other two trees. So definitely try creating depth by the way that you arrange the trees in your photos. Tip number five is get close. Take the details of the flowers because those flowers are quite beautiful when you look at them up close. A lot of people stand back, they take pictures of the trees and you see the whole scene, but you actually don't really know what a jacaranda flower even looks like. But if you get really close and photograph a cluster of those flowers, that can be quite beautiful, especially if you use a wide aperture and focus on one or two particular flowers so that with that wide aperture, it's going to give you a narrow depth of field, a shallow depth of field, so that a lot of those other ones will be a little bit blurry and the ones that you focus on will stand out. And that creates quite a pleasing feel, a pleasing look. Also, if you're shooting on a mobile phone, the closer you are to your subject, the shallower your depth of field is going to be. So if you find some low hanging flowers, just pull them close to you and bring your phone up really close so that when you focus on one or two flowers, the others and the background will be all blurred out and it'll look really beautiful. So whether you've got a regular camera or you've just got a mobile phone, you can take beautiful photos no matter what of these jacarandas. Tip number six is about people in your photos. You'll probably find if you go to some of the places that I've mentioned here, particularly the University of Queensland, or maybe if you go to Goodna during the Jacaranda Festival, there's gonna be a lot of people around and they're gonna be in your photos. So how do you deal with that? Because you don't really want random people in random places kind of distracting people from the jacaranda trees. Well, sometimes you can't get rid of the people. Sometimes there's just going to be people no matter what. So what do you do in those situations? I recommend you use them. You create a composition where the person is actually going to be a feature of the photo with the jacarandas giving the setting. So what you need to do is work out, okay, where do I want a person to be? How big do I want them to be in the frame? And position yourself and set up the composition in order to achieve that and then wait for those people to be in that correct position. An example of that is this photo here. At the University of Queensland, I wanted to take a picture of these jacaranda trees 
but there were people walking past and going by all the time and I actually thought maybe this could actually add to the photo instead of being a problem. So I set up a composition and I imagined where I wanted the cyclist to be. There were people going by on bikes all the time. So I knew that if I waited, then somebody would eventually be in that perfect spot. So I set up my composition, waited for them to ride by, and when they hit the spot that I was imagining, I hit the shutter. And it created this image. So here, really the subject is the cyclist, but the jacarandas give the setting. So you're not just taking a picture of the trees, you're also taking a picture of a scene. Our second last tip, number seven, is get creative with some detail shots. A lot of those jacarandas that have fallen to the ground are going to be able to be used to create some interesting compositions, particularly if you get a bit more abstract. I found a drain cover here in the dog park in Fairfield and I thought, okay, well, this could be used to create some interesting photos as well, something a little bit different from what you normally see with the jacarandas. So I tried a bunch of different angles and you know what? I could have probably taken photos for an hour or two just looking at different angles of those flowers on that rusted plate because the rust creates a really interesting texture, the flowers create that beautiful pop of colour and you come up with so many interesting photos just in that one square meter of area. So get creative, think about different ways that you can use those flowers to create interesting and pretty photos. And my final tip, number eight, is wait for nice light. Because most people are out having a look at the jacarandas in the middle of the day. The light is really harsh, it's very direct, a lot of the time it's shooting straight down so it's not creating nice shadows. So if you shoot earlier in the day or later in the day, then you're going to get some more interesting light which is going to create areas of shadow and light that can really make your images have more mood and more feeling. Look at this one here. This jacaranda tree was lit by the sunlight just before the sunset and the other trees were already in shadow so that one jacaranda tree stands out more and it becomes a feature. Even though it's quite small in the frame, our eyes go straight to it because the light is making it glow and giving it a really nice, quiet and peaceful feel to the whole scene. So there you have eight tips for photographing the jacarandas. Now be sure to subscribe to this channel if you're not already because we're going to be traveling all around Brisbane, we're going to be seeing a lot, we're going to be learning a lot about photography. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that and hit the notifications bell. If you enjoyed this video and got something out of it, definitely give it a thumbs up. I really would appreciate it, it does help me. And also, the last thing is, uh, if there's anything that you'd like to see in this channel, then let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to follow it up. Anyway, thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.